Greetings to all. In this lecture, we will discuss the stator winding design with an example on single layer full pitch winding. Here with respect to the single layer full pitch winding, how to select the number of coils, coil pitch and how to place the different coils in different slots and winding diagram and how to select the number of turns per phase etc. We will discuss in detail. Let us consider a 24 slot, 3 phase, 4 pole winding and 24 slot stator core frame we can see here. The slots are marked 1 to 24 and the winding design procedure will be same for any type of uh, machine. First we have to analyze with respect to the given data how many slots given, how many number of phases and what is the number of poles. Then we have to calculate the pole pitch, coil pitch and all those things. Then we have to calculate the number of turns per phase as per the Faraday's law of voltage equation. Then we have to make the coils. After making the coils one by one we have to insert in uh, different slots. Okay. After inserting all coils with uh, stubbed winding and arrow check approach we have to make the connections. Then verification of magnetic pole formations with right hand thumb rules and winding check with respect to the short circuit uh, with phase to phase or phase to the body, neutral to the body. If nothing is uh, wrong then we can complete the windings and we can bring all 6 terminals out uh, from the machine and we can test at the operating conditions. The basic equations we can consider here slots is equals to number of phases into number of poles into slots per pole per phase. For a given example 24 slots 3 phase 4 pole winding the slots per pole per phase is equals to 2 that means phase spread or phase span or phase belt with respect to each and every phase under one particular pole if you will take 6 slots are coming under one pole right. Okay, first 6 slots. So, 2 2 slots will be accommodated for each and every phases and pole pitch is equals to 6 and with respect to the full pitch winding coil pitch is equals to pole pitch and that is 6 slots. So, the conductors in first slot as well as second slots are connected. As a first step we have to calculate the number of turns per phase as per the Faraday's law of voltage equation and then we have to calculate the wire SWG. After knowing these two things and how many number of coils required we have to find that is 12 coils required. So, these 12 coils with respect to the coil pitch 6 slots we have to make and given number of tons per slot n phase is the total number of tons per phase and n uh, slot or n coil coils per each slot or conductors per each slot we have to calculate. Based on that thing we have to make the coil each coil side consists of n coils n number of tons per coil. So, after making the 12 coils we have to insert these 12 coils one by one in different slots. The slot opening width is 2 to 5 times the conductor cross sectional area. So, 2 to conductors or 3 3 conductors with respect to each and every coils we have to insert into the slots. So, with respect to the coil 1, the first coil side we have to place in slot 1, I am considering slot 1 as reference. So, the first 6 slots with respect to the pole 1, this is for reference to make the winding. So, I am considering slot 1 as a starting point and this coil side will be placed in slot number 1 and the second coil side of this coil 1 is placed in slot number 7. Okay, 1 plus 6 is equals to 7 right or 1 minus 6 also we can do. So, coil sides we have placed in slot number 1 and slot number 7. We can see here after making the coil 1 by 1 we have to insert this is slot number 1 and this side slot number 7. 
next coil 2 one coil side we have to place in slot number 2 and other coil side we have to place in slot number 20 how we are getting slot number 20 means 2 minus 6 it will give minus 4 plus 24 slots will give plus 20 one coil we have to place in a forward direction other coil we have to place backward direction to make the winding symmetry with respect to end rings. Next same fashion the conductors with respect to the next phase like two slots are related to the A phase then two slots are related to the next phase and other two slots are related to the third phase. Okay. The slots per pole will be 6 in that slots per pole per phase are equals to 2 only. So, the second phase conductors are coil we are placing in slot number 3 and slot number 9 this is slot number 3 and this is slot number 9. Next coil we have to insert slot number 4 and slot number 22 in this slot as well as in this slot with respect to my reference point fourth slot is here and 22nd slot is here and these two are already connected uh, once we have done the coil like this fashion one coil side we are placing in fourth slot other coil side we are placing in 22nd we can see here this one is sitting in fourth slot and this one we are placing in 22nd slot. So, like uh, same fashion we can place the coils related to the C phase or third phase at the end we will see which one is A phase, which one is B phase, which one is uh, C phase. With respect to the symmetrical 120 degree distribution we can give the excitation. So, the coils we have next coil we have to place in slot number 5 and slot number 11 this is slot number 5 and this is slot number 11 5 plus 6 is equals to 11 and 6 plus or 6 minus 6 is equals to 0 plus 24 is nothing but 24th. So, this coil is a representation of the actual coil right like this fashion this is the coil representation we are uh, showing as a inductor form right. So, one coil side we will place in slot number 6 and other coil side we will place in slot number 24 in this fashion. The next thing is already 7th slot is filled. So, the next 8th slot we have to fill. So, for that the coil we have to fill in 8th slot and 14th slot 8 plus 6 is equals to 14. So, these two uh, slots are filled with next coil. Next 9th is already filled. So, 10th slot we have to fill. So, 10 plus 6 is nothing but 16. So, 10th slot and 16th slots are filled with next coil. So, it has two terminals one terminal is 10 other terminal is 16. So, whatever it may be the coil you just uh, we are placing in slot number 10 and 16 means the starting point will be at 10th slot and ending point will be at 16th slot. Next with respect to the next coil we are placing in slot number 12 and slot number 18 12 plus 6 will give 18. So, this is the slot we can uh, coil we can see here. So, we have to make like this kind of coils initially 12 coils. So, each coil side we have to place one by one this coil side we are placing here in 12th slot this coil side we are placing in 18th slot. So, this is the stator uh, core lamination. So, the opening of this stator core lamination is 2 to 5 times the conductor cross sectional area. So, this much uh, this many number of turns we cannot place directly. So, one by one we have to place in the slot. So, keep it in mind that this coil side we have to place in one slot and this coil side we are placing in other slot. So, that is uh, we can see here 12th slot and 18th slot. Next coil we have to place in 13th slot 
and 13 plus 6 it will be 19th. 13th and 19th slots are filled with next coil. So, the next empty slot is already 14th slot is filled. So, 15th slot we have to place the coil. So, this is one coil side, next coil side will go 15 plus 6th that is 21 slot. We can see that one 15th plus 21. So, 15th to 21 we are placing the next coil and same fashion 17 to 23 because already 16th slot is filled. So, the next empty slot is 17. So, 17th slot and 23 slots are filled with one coil. So, all 12 slots or 12 coils with respect to the 24 slots are filled now that means 12 coils we have placed and end terminals we can see here 24 end terminals we are getting with respect to 12 coils placements in 24 slots. Okay. And we can see here n number of terminals coming out while doing the experiment or rewinding at the lab. In this image we can see the n number of terminals coming out that is 24 terminals came out. Now, how to connect these coils or these terminals to make the symmetrical three phase machine winding. Okay. So, the traditional way we can go ahead with the developed winding diagrams and other things. But the easiest way to do the winding connections, we will make the stubbing approach with arrow representation. We can see what is the meaning of stubbing here to make the connections. The stubbing is nothing but these 4 coils with respect to the A phase, next 4 coils with respect to the B phase, next 4 coils with respect to the C phase we will represent as a stubbed winding manner and each and every stubbed winding we can assign one arrow. We will assign one arrow based upon that arrow we will connect the windings. We can see here the coil which is placed in slot number 1 and slot number 7 I am representing with one stubbed winding. The number of coils for each stubbed winding will vary with respect to the single layer winding or double layer winding or fractional slot windings etcetera. For single layer winding each stub winding consists of only one coil that is 1 to 7. We have represented here 1 and 7 that stub winding starting will be 1 and ending will be 7. It is a virtual representation we are utilizing to make the connections. The number of coils per one stubbed coils we can see here for single layer winding it will be 1. For double layer winding it will be slots per pole per phase. Let us say slots per pole per phase is coming to for double layer winding. Each stubbed winding consists of two coils. This is one stubbed winding representation that is the virtual representation with respect to the physical coils. This is coil 1 and coil 2. These two coils are placed in four different slots, but starting will be 1 and ending will be 7. Let us say that 1 and 7 starting and ending terminals we are representing with respect to the stub winding. For multi layer winding also it will be slots per pole per phase. If it is a fraction let us say it is coming as a fraction 3 by 2. So, one stubbed coil consists of 2 and other stubbed coil consists of 1 coil okay, because fraction we cannot make it right this windings we cannot split into 2 parts. So, half winding here and half winding in other stub coil we cannot make it because of that reason if 3 by 2 is coming in that case one stubbed coil with two windings other stub coil with one winding. So, this is stub coil uh, winding 1 and stub winding 2. It is the uh, virtual representation of physical two coils related to one uh, phase and uh, one coil representation with respect to the same phase. And how many stubbed windings will come like this how many stubbed windings are there to make the winding connections. For that the equation is total number of phases into slots per pole per phase into pole pairs. It will give the total number for the given example 24 slots, 4 pole, 3 phase machine, 12 stubbed windings are there. So, for a first coil we are representing with one stubbed winding that is this one 
that is the starting will be 1 and ending will be 7. Same fashion we will represent remaining 12 coils with 12 stubbed windings. The number of stubbed windings depends upon the number of uh, coils and number of poles also. We can see this one here number of stubbed winding depends upon the number of pole piles as well as number of phases and slots per pole per phase. So, the stubbing with respect to the coil 2 that is 3 and 9 the coil which is placed in slot number 3 and 9 this is this one and this one I am representing as a stubbed coil 2 and first one is 1 and 7 ok. Third coil with respect to the C phase or third phase I am representing with 5 and uh, this thing and which is placed in 5th slot and 11th slot this one. So, this is 5th and this is 11th this is the stubbed coil representation with respect to the third winding or third coil. Same way we can represent all 12 stubbed coils we can see here red color 4 stubbed coils are there then brown color 4 stubbed coils and blue color another 4 stubbed coils are there. So, all 12 stubbed coils we have to connect to complete the winding. So, these stubbed coils are representing the virtual manner of the physical winding. Let us say this is the coil 1 means coil 1 representation I am uh, making as a stubbed virtual representation starting will be 1 and ending will be 7. So, how to connect this stubbed coil means simply arrow representation, arrow representation approach we will utilize it. Let us say first stubbed coil one arrow will be forward, the arrow representation rules will be the symmetrical machines and greater than three phases uh, machines one arrow will go forward other arrow will go backward and for asymmetrical machines and uh, even number of phases like two phase machines two arrows will go forward and one arrow uh, two arrows will go backward two forward and two backward and the number of arrows vary with respect to the number of stubbed windings. Here it is a symmetrical three phase machine right one arrow will go forward manner other arrow will come backward manner. So, this arrow with respect to each and every stubbed coils we will represent now. So, with respect to the first stubbed winding the arrow will be forward manner S1 we can see here. With respect to the second stubbed winding that is the, uh, this one B related one which is starting will be 9 and ending will starting will be 3 and ending will be 9 that arrow will be backward manner we can see here. So, the third uh, stubbed coil arrow will be forward then again backward then forward then backward. So, one arrow forward and one arrow backward, one arrow forward other arrow will be backward we can see here 6 arrows I have drawn here with respect to first st 6 stubbed windings. Next 6 also we can see here total 12 stubbed coils we have and 12 arrows I have represented here S1 to S12. Since it is a symmetrical machine one arrow forward, one arrow backward, one arrow forward, one arrow will be backward. So, with respect to the arrows direction we will connect all these stubbed windings. Stubbed winding is nothing but virtual representation of these terminals right. So, these terminals we will connect by utilizing the arrow check representation. Let us consider the number of poles four poles are there right each pole consists of six six slots we can see here pole representation at the end after making the winding connections we will see based upon the magnetic principles the number of poles are forming or not. So, remove the mechanical or physical representation of the conductors with respect to all uh, coils we will follow only arrows now the stubbed windings with respect to the A phase are these four right the coil which is placed in slot 1 and slot 7, the slot 8 and slot 14, slot 13 and slot 19, slot 2 and slot 20. The virtual representation of stubbed windings will be like this and arrow for each and every stubbed winding we can see here ok. Based upon this arrow direction we will connect the windings. This arrow is representing only how we can connect the windings it is not representing the current. 
we can see here the head point of the S1 is connected to the tile point of S4 that is what we have done here. Let us consider this is the reference point and tail point of S1 I have considered the reference point A and head of the S1 is connected to the tail of the next arrow walk through along the arrow directions and red color arrow we can see here in this fashion and here arrow will be in this fashion ok S1 I am redrawing here as blue color one and this head point I am connecting to the tail point of this arrow then next point this arrow head will be connected to the next arrow tail point that is S7. So, S4 head point is connected to the S7 tile point, the next S7 head point is connected to the S10 head uh, tile point, we can see this is the S10 tile point, this is the S10 one and finally, we can make the connections. So, initially we are coming from, from this point and we are travelling through this stubbed winding. So, with respect to the arrow, this head is connected to the this tile arrow S4 winding and this head of S4 arrow is connected to the tile of S7 arrow that is this connection and head of the S7 arrow is connected to the tile of S10 arrow and finally, head of the S10 is coming out that is A dash. So, we can see the four coils related to the A phase winding are connected in this fashion and forming two terminals A and A dash. Based upon the star delta we can connect in, uh, in that fashion either it is star or delta. Same manner the stubbed windings with respect to the B phase are four coils are there, four stubbed windings. Follow the arrows, let us consider one starting point that is B and the head point of S5 is connected to the tile point of S8 and same thing you can visualize in this image. This one is connected to this thing and S8 head point is connected to the S11 tile point that is this one S8 head point, this is S8 right. So, this head point is connected to the S11 tile point and S11 head point is connected to the S2 tile point that is this connection and finally, S2 head is coming out that is B dash. So, all four coils related to the B phase are connected in this fashion and the winding uh, connections with respect to B phase also done with arrow representation. Only we are following the arrow head and tiles. It is the simplest way to make the winding connections. Same fashion for C phase, S3 arrow is in this direction. So, head of arrow will be connected to the tail of next arrow S6, then other uh, arrow tail point, then head of the S9 arrow is connected to the tail point of S12 arrow, then S12 head we are bringing out as C dash terminal, the starting will be C. We can connect any arrow with any manner, let us say S3 is in this fashion and in this fashion right. Initially, I can connect S3 to S9 and S9 head to S6 tail point and S6 head point I can connect to S12 and S12 head point I can bring it out, any manner I can connect it. One more connection with red uh, color one already we have seen in this fashion. Okay. This four arrows with respect to the head and tiles we have to connect. So, head to next arrow tile and head to another arrow tile in that fashion we have to connect then we can make the symmetrical windings with respect to all these three phases. This is the three phase uh, sorry C phase winding connection. So, all three phase connections we can see in this image by utilizing the stubbed winding approach and arrow check representation and this is the mission. Uh, winding finishings with threading and other things. Now, these are the connections with respect to the three phases right. 
Let us consider an instant where A phase current is positive, B phase current is positive and C phase current is negative whether with respect to this winding connections the magnetic poles are forming or not we will see now. With respect to the A phase positive current, current is entering at coil side placed at, at the slot number 1 right. So, here it will be cross at slot 1 and same fashion current is leaving out from the slot number 7 coil side. So, we can apply the right hand thumb rule and we can see the flux lines in this fashion clockwise manner and here flux lines will be in anti-clockwise manner in this direction and here it is in the clockwise direction. And same fashion at 14th the coil side placed at the uh, at the 14th slot is current is entering and 8th slot current is leaving it is dot it is anti clockwise flux lines we can see here. Same way current is entering at 13th slot coil side and leaving at 19th slot coil side entering here that means clockwise direction of flux lines and leaving at the 19th slot coil side in opposite direction the flux lines we can see. Next the current is entering at coil side which is placed in coil, uh, slot 2 here also current cross with respect to the cross we can see the uh, clockwise direction of flux lines and at 20th slot current is coming out that means opposite direction of flux lines just apply a thumb rule and identify the flux direction flux line direction. Same manner we can see for B phase current is entering at 10th slot 24 21 and 22 and 9th slot. So, 10th slot is here current is entering, 9th slot also current is entering and six, uh, 21 slot and 22nd slot current is entering clockwise direction of magnetic flux lines we can see in this 4 uh, conductors. In the remaining conductors like 16, 15, 14 and third we can mark it 3, 4 and 15, 16 the current is coming out with respect to this connections. So, where the flux lines are going in opposite direction we can see here this is the opposite direction as compared to the clockwise direction it is anti clockwise. Same manner C phase also we can analyze. At the end if you will see the flux loops, the flux loops under slot 2 and slot 3 are different we can see here this slot number 2 and slot number 3 are different flux lines uh, loops are in opposite direction. The flux loops are in same direction from slot number 2 to slot number 21. Okay. So, these 6 loops will be in additive manner and it will form a bigger flux loop in this manner and next 6 loops which are in same direction will form another flux loop. Here also one more flux loop will form and fourth flux loop also will form that means 4 number of poles are forming with respect to the uh, this 3 windings connections and given current instant. If we will change the current instant A equals to plus and B equals to uh, negative and C equals to positive current same number of poles will form, but this uh, field poles will be uh, the angle will be changed with respect to the rotating magnetic field. Now, how to calculate the number of turns per phase? For that thing we will consider the Faraday's law of voltage equation where the voltage is equals to number of turns into d phi by dt change in flux and the flux if we will represent in terms of b into a here a is nothing but area of cross section with respect to the flux lines under one particular pole with respect to air gap. And finally, we can get the 
voltage is equals to 4 into number of turns per phase into area of cross section with respect to one pole at the air gap and average flux density and frequency of operation. And to convert average voltage to RMS voltage we have to multiply with pi by 2 root 2 and at the end we can add the winding factor with respect to the type of winding then we will get the complete voltage equation in terms of RMS. From here we can calculate the number of turns per phase. We have to consider the phase voltage RMS from the given uh, problem statement and we have to calculate the air gap flux cross sectional area with respect to one pole that is pi into dis by p into le here dis is nothing but stator inner diameter and le is nothing but core length and average flux density we can consider 0.5 to 1.2 uh, tesla and f is nothing but frequency of operation and k1 is the fundamental winding factor it is a combination of pitch factor distribution factor skewing factor and slot opening factor the cumulatively we can select the winding factor from 0.9 to 0.98 after substituting all these numbers voltage we know and air gap uh, cross sectional area also we can calculate by knowing the number of poles and uh, inner diameter of the stator and length of the core. We can select the air gap flux density of operation with respect to the given uh, material or type of machine and frequency operation also we know and consider the winding factor then we can calculate the number of turns per phase. After calculating the number of turns per phase in order to calculate the number of turns per each slot or conductors per each slot we have to consider first how many coils are there here each phase has 4 coils right. So that 4 coils into number of co uh, turns in each and every coil. So n coil we have to select that is equals to total number of turns per phase divided by coils per phase will give the number of turns per each coil that equation is this one and coils per phase we can calculate with respect to this equation slots per pole per phase into uh, pole pairs into number of layers or coil sides per each slot. After knowing the number of turns per each and every coil we have to verify the window area. Here the area with respect to the slot is nothing but AS into window factor is nothing but KW how much window we are utilizing to make the winding because this slot area we are utilizing for conductors these are the conductors and some liners that is insulating paper between the slot and winding this is the one and we have to place some spacers if it is a multi layer winding and closers and some wooden sticks for closing the slot with respect to the uh, conductors all those things we have to consider with respect to the slot area it is a combination of windings liners and spacers and wooden parts and closers all those things we have to consider. The slot area into window factor should be greater than the number of layers or coil sides per each slot into number of coils per each slot or number of turns per each slot into cross sectional area of each conductor. Here if it is a two layer winding the number of turns per each coil will be half we can say like that manner and here n is equals to 2 and then area of cross section with respect to each wire is nothing but current divided by current density that is I phase RMS we have to calculate from the given power and voltage and power factor. Next thing is how we can make the winding symmetry with respect to the end winding. We can see here this is the machine where all coils are placed in forward direction. Here some gap is there on both sides we can see here 
in this place highlighted red color uh, place there is no windings all end windings are placed at one particular place the width of the uh, width of the stator back iron is required here let us say 6 coils are there means 6 into coil width that much width is required to accommodate or to place this type of windings here there is no windings in this width we have to place 6 coils in some machines where the back iron width is small means we can see here this is the back iron width in this place we have to place the 6 coil sides width of 6 coil sides here there is no symmetry with respect to the method 1 where all coils are coming forward direction only so the end windings will uh, accommodate or will come into one particular place and this width is exceeding the back iron width that is uh, DC let us consider depth of the back iron if the end windings width is uh, let us say X is greater than the back iron depth then the rotor placement is uh, not possible it is difficult to, to place the rotor and the end winding leakage flux component also will vary and it may increase also to make the winding symmetry with respect to the end windings in this uh, place we have to make one coil will be forward manner other coil will be backward direction same fashion 3 to 9 will be forward 4 to 21 will be backward like this fashion we have to connect one will go forward one will go backward so always we will see the width will be two coil sides at the end ring side like this way we can make the symmetry in the winding we can see here the width of uh, end rings at any given uh, point along the stator uh, circumference is same the width I am talking about this width the red color one the width with respect to the end windings always two windings because one coil is going forward other coil is coming backward manner okay whereas in the earlier case if we will see all six coils are coming together that means the coil width and coil width or end winding width will be six times the coil width another way to get the symmetry with respect to the end rings in this place two coils we can place forward manner and two coils we can place backward manner in this fashion we can place that means 1 to 7 slot we can place one conduct uh, coil and 2 to 8 slot we can place second coil the coil sides related to the next adjacent phase let us say these two coils are related to A phase and next two coils that is 3 to 21 and 4 to 22 those two coils will go backward manner then 5 to 11 and 6 to 12 coils will come forward okay then 9 to uh, 10 and 9 and 10 coils will go backward in that fashion it will go one coil one phase will be backward other phase will be forward in that fashion the windings we have to distribute then only we can see the symmetry with respect to the end windings that is this arrow uh, mark otherwise at this particular place that is this one at this particular place you will see the all end windings are overlapped each other and this width is greater than the depth of the back iron then rotor placement is not possible and the same difference we can see here for a symmetrical machine in the entire core the width of the end uh, end windings is same this end winding I am talking here we can see in this portion and in this portion there is no end winding in this portion red color circled portion there is no end winding all windings are coming at this particular point if this width is exceeding the back uh, iron depth then the rotor placement is difficult whereas in symmetrical distribution we can see all windings are symmetrically distributed 
and enough space is there to make the or to place the rotor. And the difference is end winding distribution is symmetrical and end winding distribution is asymmetrical in this condition. With this I am concluding this lecture. In this lecture we have discussed the winding design examples with respect to single layer full pitch where we have discussed how to make the winding diagram, how to select the number of coils, coil pitch and uh, how to make the stubbing approach based connections etcetera. Thank you.